Traffic traveling a highway is referred to as the noise source. The predominant traffic factors that can cause an increase in noise include higher traffic volumes, higher traffic speed, or more heavy trucks. In addition, the distance from the highway affects the level of traffic noise at a noise sensitive site. As the distance between the noise sensitive site and the highway increases, the traffic noise level decreases. Here is a decibel reading taken 50 feet from a busy highway. Notice the noise level decreases approximately 4.5 decibels when we double the distance to 100 feet. Doubling the distance again to 200 feet reduces the noise level by about another 4.5 decibels. Site conditions along the sound path between the traffic noise source and noise sensitive site also affect the sound transmission. For example, soft or absorptive conditions along the sound path such as lawns or fields diminish the noise level faster than hard or reflective surfaces like water or parking lots. Objects in the sound path such as buildings, berms, or community privacy walls interrupt or alter the path of the noise causing a reduction in noise levels. The ability of objects in the sound path to reduce traffic noise may be limited by height and or location. While trees and shrubs are aesthetically pleasing and can block the view of roadway traffic, they provide little, if any, measurable traffic noise reduction. There is a common perception that traffic noise is louder at night. Actually, traffic noise just seems louder at night because noises from other sources are quieter. This makes the highway traffic noise more noticeable, but not any louder. Additionally, lower traffic volumes at night can cause the noise from a single vehicle to be more noticeable and therefore more interruptive. During the day, traffic flow is more constant, resulting in a more continuous noise level, and the change in the noise caused by an individual vehicle is less noticeable. Since the noise levels are determined for a project that has not been constructed yet, future traffic noise levels must be based on predictions from a computer model. As stipulated by federal regulation, traffic noise levels are predicted using the Federal Highway Administration computer model called the Traffic Noise Model, or TNM. Future traffic noise levels are predicted using forecasted traffic volumes for a design year that is 20 years after the completion of construction. Field noise measurements are performed only as a verification procedure for the TNM model. Field traffic information is entered into the TNM model to predict existing noise levels that are compared to the field measurements. This process is called model validation and is the only use of field monitored noise measurements for projects involving improvements to existing roadways. Once this process is complete, the TNM computer model is used to predict all noise levels as part of the traffic noise study. FDOT typically uses noise barriers to reduce traffic noise levels at identified noise impacted areas. A noise barrier is a concrete wall that physically blocks traffic noise, resulting in lower noise levels behind the noise barrier. Other methods of lowering noise levels, such as traffic management and altering the horizontal and vertical roadway alignment, are also considered. However, these measures are typically not compatible with efficient traffic movement, or in the case of shifting the roadway alignment, the noise impacts are transferred to other areas. Sound moves outward from its source in all directions. When there are no objects between the source and the receiver site, sound will travel in a direct path. Placing a solid object, such as a noise barrier, between the source and noise-sensitive site can reduce noise. Although a barrier will stop the direct transmission of noise from the noise source, a noise barrier cannot completely eliminate traffic noise. Sound waves actually bend around and over the top of a noise barrier. This is known as diffraction. There is a zone directly behind the barrier where the effects of diffraction are minimized. This area, commonly referred to as the shadow zone, 
will experience the greatest amount of reduction that can be provided by a noise barrier. Areas beyond the shadow zone will not have a noticeable reduction in noise levels.